Ladies and gentlemen, now welcome back to the Quick Look series as Blizzard is updating the classes. Of course, we're going to revisit them and we're kicking off with a cracker. Blizzard have been paying close attention and the Enhancement Shaman just got a boatload of changes that have solved a lot of problems that people have had with its Enhancement for quite some time now. Uh, it's a good time to be an Enhancement Shaman. It's still got its little tweaks, but honestly, if we dig down into everything, when we've got things like talents and then we've got covenants and soul binds and then blah 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 there's going to be stuff along the way that's not quite perfect but they've got it pretty goddamn good let's look at what's changed so the big check question is what was the problems with it that they've tried to tackle well mainly that it had become this kind of whack-a-mole priority spec it always had something to do it was just a furious frenzy frenzy where you were kind of battling carpal tunnel rather than the enemy and none of the spells really worked together. They didn't have a synergy. They didn't have a flow. You weren't leading up to something. You were kind of just whacking the crash lightning. And then, oh, I've got, I can fire a lightning bolt. So I'm going to fire that. And now I've got storm strike ready. And I can fire that. And now I've got lava lash. And I can fire that. And I'll put shocks out. And then I'll rock biter in between. Well, what they've decided to do now is make it a cooldown based spec. So I imagine some of you might not be happy with that. But honestly, it works out really well. So give it a chance. Uh, and by a cooldown based spec, what I mean is that each of the spells has its own little cooldown. They've adjusted Storm Strike down a bit, so it's got less of a cooldown. And they all synergize together in some way. You're leading to something. You are getting ready to something. So you feel like you're setting up for a big hit. And honestly, that big hit when you actually pull it off is really satisfying. Uh, it's one of the wonderful things. So let's go over those changes and how that actually plays out. So Rockbiter is gone. Forget that. It's no longer on your bars. This is actually a good thing. They've pruned a couple of spells out there. So Searing Totem is gone as well. That is fine, okay? That is actually okay. Searing Totem didn't find its place with any of the Shaman specs, really. It was just a button that you pressed, and it did some damage. That It didn't do anything. It didn't fit. It was a nice idea, but it didn't really work out. So Searing Totem is gone. Rockbiter is gone as well, because the way uh, Maelstrom has changed now, it has no purpose. It was just basically there to fill blanks in the spec. And now it makes no sense whatsoever. It's just a button that you kind of pressed because you didn't have anything else to press. So they took that away as well, which has freed up a little bit of room on the action bars. Shamans were one of the most overstuffed specs in the game, especially with Wind Fury Totem returning, which is now working, thank God. Uh, we briefly had the proper Wind Fury animation when it propped for our group members. That is gone again. <laughs> uh, I assume it will be coming back. And they have fixed it now, so it's got a 30-yard range. Previously, they had it at 12 yards. Which made no sense. Like, it, it became a frustration. What you want is people to drop Wind Fury and be happy about it. Not drop it and be annoyed that they have to drop it if we move a few yards away from where they dropped it. So now it's got a full 30-yard range, which means it lasts at least a couple of packs. And there is a place to drop it as you're traveling from pack to pack. So it works out really nicely in order to buff your party. And hopefully once the animation returns, you'll actually see the fruits of your labor quite visually. Uh, which will be very nice. So as I said before, let's go over a few of these changes then. So Storm Strike cooldown was reduced to 7.5 seconds from 9, but Stormbringer no longer causes your next Storm Strike to incur its cooldown. So it does reset Storm Strike, but you don't get to cast two in a row like you can do on live. So that's a brief change there. An excellent change is that Maelstrom Weapon now stacks to 10 instead of 5. This is the same thing that all classes have been asking for who use a system like this where they need to reach a certain amount in order to activate an ability is the way the game works and you don't realize this until you have two of them so this would be something like mind blast uh, when we finally got two mind blast charges you really understand the benefit of having two charges lava burst is the same you don't realize how many lava burst procs you actually lose until you have two charges and you can see that the game does proc things back to back so having two charges available is great so now maelstrom weapon will stack to 10 instead of five which gives you room so you're not wasting those Maelstrom weapon procs and overall losing them over the course of a fight. Uh, it will still only use a maximum of 5, but it will go up to 10. One thing I'll note that you might see in footage here is that in-game, the UI is telling you you have 5, but in reality, you have 4. Something they're still adjusting, no doubt, from these, this cha these changes this week. So don't worry about it if you see me sort of like... Not hard cast, but a very quick cast of Lightning Bolt. It's because the UI is going, you have five stacks, when in reality I actually have four. Uh, Feral Spirits now actually fucking does something. My god, they now grant a stack of Maelstrom weapon as soon as you press them, and they guarantee to give you an additional five over the duration. They're not just firing off the dogs because dogs do damage, go kill. Right, now they actually do something, they interact with your spec. 
wonderful. One of the better changes, of course, is to Enhancement AoE. Chain Lightning increases the damage and reduces the cooldown of Crash Lightning. It actually does something together. <gasps> I've got to tell you guys, when this thing gets flowing, it's so good. Because you're basically crash lightning into there, generating five maelstrom. Then you're chain lightning, which gives you another crash. And you get this wonderful flow of the spec working together. And it feels amazing. Uh, some new talents have come in. So we've got like lashing flames, which uh, causes your, lava la uh, your flame shock. When you lava lash a target that's got flame shock on it, it increases the damage by 100%. It does a lot of damage. So... We're going to get to Hailstorm in a moment, which is the, the big thing people are hype around right now. And it still shares a cooldown. Your Frost Shock and your Flame Shock still share a cooldown. So what you'll see is you'll when you're playing it, you're like, I can't really fit Flame Shock in. But if you do take Lashing Flames, you're going to want to do that. So you get this like different priority where you're setting things up again because you've now got this other interaction happening with your spells. It works out kind of well. Uh, Storm Fury is now a, a new talent. It causes your Wind Fury weapon procs to reduce the cooldown of Storm Strike by one second. It's a nice passive. Just a really nice passive to have. Fire Nova is back. And Hailstorm is great. And we're going to get to that in a second. But it's entirely possible if you're doing Mega AoE that Fire Nova will be the way to go. The talent row itself looks really rock solid in terms of choices. You've got like a cleave with Hailstorm and the Finovers working really well. So it looks pretty good. It does mean the third talent in the row is kind of dead. <laughs> it feels kind of dead uh, in, this, in this new world. But there's going to be those kinds of growing pains when they make significant changes where things need adjusting. Because after this, they're definitely going to have to adjust some of the Covenant powers. Kind of the nature of the beast in Shadowlands is that they're making class changes, like base class changes. Then that's going to roll into the Covenant abilities have to change because they were based on the previous class and that's probably going to affect the Soulbinds as well. So we expect this sort of domino effect to happen where they'll make changes. That means they need to revisit other stuff uh, to in order to fix that as well. But Cycle of the Elements, where your Storm Strike now resets the cooldown of your Shock Spells, doesn't really fit into this row that has Hailstorm and Fine over in it. Uh, both of them have much better use, and Hailstorm seems to be just much better in general. Uh, Hailstorm now replaces Searing Assault then. And this causes each stack of Maelstrom weapon consumed to increase the damage of your Frost Shock by 75% and hit an additional target up to 6. Now... Those of you who've played Enhancement Shower and probably just creamed your pants. If you haven't, let me explain it to you. Because this now works with the new synergies that we previously didn't have in BFA. But we do ha now have in Shadowlands. Is that you can get this cycle going where you're Crash Lightning. That's giving you Maelstrom with the, the mix of Storm Strike in there. To then generate this 5 stack of Maelstrom. Which you can then turn into a Chain Lightning. Which has now buffed your Frost Shock massively up to 6 targets. Then you can Frost Shock into it. Which also the... Chain Lightning also reduce your Crash Lightning, so it repeats, and you get this big, heavy-hitting boom effect, because Frost Shock right now hits like a truck. Now, I'm arguing it's probably slightly overtuned. Uh, other people, though, who are running some numbers say it's not actually that overtuned, although it feels it because it hits so hard. It will get our scale by Fire Nova once there's more targets. So it kind of, uh, maybe it is in the right place, and it just feels super strong, but at the same time, setting it up perfectly and having the Frost Shock hit that hard is really, really good. So those are your overall changes that have actually happened, okay? Those are what's happened, and you have just so much more synergy with the spec. This makes it so much more fun to play. Also increases the skill cap, because now you're actively working towards making things happen. You might be cycling to get a good Crash Lightning, AoE, Chain Lightning into Frost Shock situation going. You can also do that in Cleave. If you're playing Fine Over, you're going to change into spreading your Flame Shocks far more. Does feel to me... And uh, between me and Finn, we're kind of torn on this. I do think that maybe decoupling the shocks would be better, but that could lead to a real bloat in the playstyle if you're trying to spread frost, trying to spread flame shocks while simultaneously trying to manage frost shocks with chain lightnings and with crash lightnings and with storm strikes and and doing say lava lashes onto the target as well. I do see the the counter at two and four, but what it does feel like is if you take hailstorm, there's it feels like there's not much place to use flame shock. And this kind of comes back to what we said earlier, is some of the Covenant abilities like Primordial Wave rely on Flame Shock to really get going, uh, which means that those kind of Covenant abilities are kind of dead for enhancement. It was already kind of bad, uh, very bad for enhancement, actually. Uh, in, you might have seen that in the last Covenant Wars, but as it stands right now, it's super, super dead, uh, is what it feels like right now. Now, some criticism, uh, for sure. I played around with it for about six hours today. Finn's played it for a good 18 hours. 
there is definitely downtime in the spec right now. There, because it's cooldown based and you are setting up for these things, you do run into these moments where there's nothing to do. Now, we really suspect that this is a just a gear issue, like a, a literal leveling gear issue, and it'll just naturally go away as you get more haste and your shocks reset quicker, things like that, and it won't actually be an issue. We tested this in Torghast, where you can actually sort of cheat and get more haste in there, and it definitely felt much smoother. So more of a leveling, we think, a leveling problem than anything else. It also isn't that bad, honestly, because you run into these sort of like one or two second gaps, and you're like, hmm, what should I be doing next? Now, on the good side of this, one, you can start planning what it is you want to do next. But if you're in a, a boss kill situation, you know what you're going to do next. And you're not going to exactly require a lot of thought there. But it does allow you to use your more utility spells. Your utility totems, be it refreshing Wind Fury, dropping a healing stream, uh, dropping a capacitor, dropping Earthbind. All these things that you can do as a shaman for utility, you can throw them into these gaps. Now, you can't do that every single time. But in dungeons and stuff, it was definitely helpful to have these little windows where I could do stuff like that. And actually wasn't losing damage. I'm not actually affecting my DPS by doing this, but it's noticeable. I'm just going to put it out there. It is noticeable right now that you do run into these little hiccups. Now, if you take Earthen Spike, that kind of does fill the gap a little bit. You fill the gap up there because it's just a short cooldown at 20 seconds that you get to sort of add it into the rotation regularly. But without Earthen Spike, you do run into these gaps. It might be something Blizzard wants to be aware of, or gear itself might naturally work it out. So there's the Enhancement Shaman, guys. Overall, rock solid rock solid really great job by blizzard we're also going to be doing affliction warlock in the next day or so which has also received uh not an overhaul but a, a sizable update is what we'll say so we'll uh we'll take a look at that in the next day or so thank you so much for listening guys i'll see you again bye bye